Are you looking for the best home theater system? In this video, we will look at some of the best home theater systems on the market. Before we get started with our video, we have included links in the description. So make sure you check those out to see which one is in your budget range. Number 1. I always wanted a piece of Dolby Atmos action at home and have read great reviews on Klipsch speakers over the years so this was my turn to give it a shot and I'm glad I did. I really liked this deal and ended up revamping my entire home theater experience around it, adding, not part of this deal, a 9.2 channel receiver, an additional Klipsch R12SWI wireless subwoofer and a pair of Klipsch R41SA Dolby Atmos for rear heights later on to complete a 5.2.4 setup. Now for what you get with this deal, the front tower's pair of R625FA that features Klipsch's iconic 90x90 square Tractrix horn technology have speakers firing in front and upward for Dolby Atmos with a total of four channels among them, prepare for wiring four channels not two, between the pair. Ensure ceiling is not too high for the best experience as Atmos effect bounces off the ceiling to the main listening position. Drivers are large enough for good bass within itself at the right frequencies, correct receiver calibration very important here. These pair of bookshelf speakers are for 1M, for its wattage does a really good job. If there was one upgrade I would do, it would be to the center channel speaker, R52C. While the sound is good, more often than not, you might have to tweak your dB levels in your avenue receiver, amplifier to listen to clear movie dialogues spoken in a low tone. The R120SW subwoofer takes the cake as one of the best subwoofers out there with a 12 inches front firing spun copper IMG woofer that produces magnificent bass. See comment above about adding a second subwoofer if you can. Makes the whole experience complete. Enjoy home audio like it was meant to be. Overall, I would recommend these to anyone who is on a reasonable budget to set up a rewarding Dolby Atmos experience at home. Number 2. Dude, no way. Something is definitely fishy around here. I would like to give 4.5 stars instead of perfect but I'm unable to give partial stars here. I have read many reviews around the web of this system and the speakers get criticized heavily. Now, there is a problem with purchasing electronics, one must set a budget but if one went with the reviews for the mid and low range electronics, they would never purchase anything. So as I awaited arrival of this system I actually told friends, well, it is still on my life list to get that premium set of speakers but not this round due to my budget. After using it I retract that and will be happy to use this system for a long time. Well, my wife and I watched these Stargate Atlantis episodes on the disc that completely stopped playing on our last Blu-ray player before all of this mayhem, the storm in the eye. These episodes are extremely dynamic. The dialogue was very crisp. The wind and the impact of rain were quite good. The left-right definition following the action was excellent. My wife iterated that she could not wait for us to watch the Stargate movies such as Continuum and hear them on this system. I agree. In the passages where there is a constant bass sound the subwoofer had a bit of a drone to it. I turned it down a little from the recommended one half volume point. I also discovered that the receiver was on the sci-fi effect setting. I turned it to standard and that made it better, but I am unsure if it is completely fixed. The dynamic range is a bit big. The loud impactful music can be a bit loud when the dialogue is at the level one want. I do not think that is a system problem but that is how they produce these soundtracks. We used the Wipeout system to balance the speakers and boy that was the simplest setup I ever had. I thought I would wait a bit and hear Dolby as Yamaha intended but I may override it a bit to get the peaky music down. I am one who typically turns up the dialogue one notch or turns down the front left, right a notch and I think that is what these soundtracks need to keep from blasting me off the couch. I played an iPhone through the system. I am a bit ignorant of the latest standards but was surprised that this AirPlay uses Bluetooth. BT always sounds really poor to me, ergo the compression. But it is a great convenience for playing music. It would be nicer to use USB like I do with CarPlay as that sounds great but from what I read the USB is only for storage media. I am coming from a Maggot Box $200 theater in a box that was a gift. It was the worst tracking disc player that I ever had and the sound was okay. So as with many buyers, relatively speaking this system is a significant upgrade. After one TV night we are enjoying it very much and if it is in your budget I highly recommend it. There are reasons why in this awful COVID economy that this package was sold out for months. I got lucky just as our Blu-ray completely quit recognizing discs, after a long period of trauma, that this highly rated system became available. I am very pleased. I recommend this and am grateful for a good experience with B&H 2. 
Number 3. I bought this last month and finally relied the product today. I paired it with my Sony Bravia XRA80J, and connected the center channel sync cable. Movies sound incredible, and the surround is amazing. I don't have the subwoofer, because I am in a condo and don't want my neighbors banging on the ceiling or floor during action scenes, but if I was in a house I would definitely add the sub, for the full-on theater experience. One thing I want to add is the 360 reality audio sounds amazing, and Sony gives you a code for a free 30-day trial, don't pick Amazon Music! Exclamation mark dot. There are literally only 39 songs available, and while they sound really good, they are all perfect for the spa or a massage. Come on! If you decide to check it out, and I think you should. Research each option to see who has the biggest catalog. I basically threw my free coupon away by picking Amazon, so I have to decide whether or not I want to pay for a month on the other services. I will find out who has the most content first. Back to the system. Pairing this with my Bravia XRA80J makes the integration seamless. Only one remote is needed, makes the spouse happy, and it is aesthetically pleasing in the room. I have had the HTA9 for about two weeks now. Setup was real easy. The sound is better than expected. Not using the TV as center channel and the dialogue is still spot on. Surround effects are realistic. I am real happy with the setup. They are wife approved also because they look nice and clean. I do have a full home theater in a different room with a 120 screen that sounds better, but for my family room within a 65 inches Bravia where I used to have a sound bar this is night and day better, immerse yourself in a multi-dimensional audio experience with the HTA9 home theater system. Unique 360 spatial sound mapping technology calibrates sound to your room for an environment that seems to expand beyond the walls. Number 4. Any number of soundbar systems can significantly improve your TV's audio, but if you really want to take advantage of rear channel surround sound effects, your best bet is still a separate AV receiver and 5.1 speaker system. Even though that means a room full of speakers, they don't have to be huge to create impressive sound. The $999 Klipsche Reference Theater Pack is a perfect example. Each of its four satellite speakers is tiny, yet together they can fill a small or medium-sized room with a surround sound field that no sound bar or stereo system can match. Especially since Klipsche includes a hefty wireless subwoofer. At a grand, though, the Klipsche is a little expensive for what it does. It's also sonically eclipsed by larger systems, so it's really best for people who demand the smallest of satellites. If that's you, the well-matched Klipsche is worth a listen. The Klipsche Reference Theatre Pack is available for $999, with Australian and UK pricing and availability to be confirmed. Expect somewhere in the realm of £999 and $2,200, though. While competitors are falling over themselves to produce at most compatible surround sets, Klipsche is keeping it simple with a 5.1 only setup. The pack appears to be an update on the older HD500 with some important tweaks. While competitors are falling over themselves to produce at most compatible surround sets, Klipsche is keeping it simple with a 5.1 only setup. The pack appears to be an update on the older HD500 with some important tweaks. The system consists of four identical satellites which feature those iconic, brassy IMG drivers in a 3.5-inch size combined with a 0.75-inch horn-loaded tweeter. The black plastic cabinets are small, just 7.75 inches high, 4.5 inches wide and 5.5 inches deep. Like the more expensive focal satellites we saw recently, the Klipsche features a set of spring clips, so don't expect to use 12 gauge or thicker wire unless you install pin plugs on the ends. Number 5. The Poke Audio Signature E-Series is an updated mid-range lineup that sits between the entry-level T-Series and the higher-end RTIA series. There's plenty of choice within the range, including floor standing, bookshelf and dedicated center speakers. Poke hasn't added a dedicated surround speaker or upward firing module to the lineup because, with the exception of the center models, these speakers are designed to work in both hi-fi and home cinema systems. However, those looking to build a good multi-channel system have some great models to choose from, including three floor standing tower speakers in the shape of the S60E, S55E and S50E, two center speakers in the form of the S35E and S30E, and three bookshelf speakers with the S20E, S15E and S10E. All the speakers in this range use the same high-resolution Terralene tweeter and proprietary power port technology, making the only difference the size of the mid-bass drivers. 
For the purpose of this review, we are testing a 5.1 channel system composed of the S50E, 599 pounds a pair, the S35E, 299 pounds each, and the S15E, 249 pounds a pair, along with an HTS-12 subwoofer, 499 pounds each to handle all the base duties. The combined cost of this system is 1,600 pounds, which is very reasonable when you consider all you get. If the Signature E-Series sounds good as well, this could be a definite bargain. The Poke Audio S50E is the smallest floor stander in the Signature E-Series but, like the majority of the speakers in the range, it uses 5.25-inch mid-bass drivers with mica-reinforced polypropylene cones. In the case of the S50E, there are two mid-bass drivers and a 1-inch Terralene tweeter in a fairly typical layout, and it looks surprisingly normal for a speaker manufacturer.